So what we have observed is that quality is really two things combined. It's the reality of what's been delivered to the customer, whether it's a product, a, a service, or even just some sort of experience. And when we take a look at this, there is a model that describes what quality is in that deliverable. The model was created by Dr. Noriaki Kano of Japan. And in it, we see a vertical axis, and the axis is for customer satisfaction. The horizontal axis is about the quality of the design, or the excellence of the design. And both go from low to high for customer satisfaction, and low to high for quality of the design. And Dr. Kano defined three different functions that describe quality. So he said the first is this bottom curve. It's required quality. And this is what must be there for a product or a service or an experience to be actually satisfactory at the lowest level. For instance, with a car, the car actually starts. It drives, it stops, it steers. Those don't excite us. We don't go compare these to buy a car. The next level, though, is competitive Competitive quality is talking about that comparison between two different components of or requirements of a product. And so here we might take a look at the, the capability of a car to go a vast distance on fuel. And so that's maybe gas mileage that we would talk about there. But we'll have gas mileage as also a function of cost or value. Now, attractive quality is very different. Attractive quality is this thing that even when it's poorly designed, you see, it's giving positive satisfaction. And that's because somehow the designers have anticipated that this particular quality is something the customer has not even recognized that they need. And this is what Jobs meant when he talked about make the product so people want to eat it. So we see that's the definition of product, process, service, or experience quality. The next model is one I created, and it's out about how do we deliver quality? And here we see there's three steps. The first step is understanding what the customer wants. And then we design the product. And in this process of purposeful design, we make choices. And so we come up with a promise that we make to the customer. That's in our specifications and our advertising. And then we say that is what we're going to deliver. Now that becomes the promise. And finally, we have what the customer gets. And that's the actual experience in the use or delivery of the product or service. And the gap there is where we fall short. That's where people say, we want to have perfection. We would like to have six sigma levels of service. And when we take a look at all of those things together, what we see is that quality is not just a definition. It's not just those things. It's actually an objective that we want to achieve by the purposeful design of a deliverable that's intended for a particular person or customer. And as we're looking at that, we can set quality as an objective function. And when we set quality as an objective function, what we see is there's really two things we would like to do. We would like to have quality being the persistent pursuit of goodness. Are we doing the things that we need to do to give the right type of experience or capability to the customers? It, coupled with, at the same time or simultaneously, the relentless pursuit of badness. Let's not do anything that would harm that experience or degrade that experience or cause waste or loss. And so we have both quality engineering, creating the good thing, and reliability engineering, avoiding the bad things. And both of these have to be judged by the viewpoint of the deliverable recipient. What is the customer thinking about this? And are we actually meeting their requirements for quality? So, as we close this final video, what you can realize is that quality is going to be, in the end, relative to particular things that we do and the way we do those things to create an outcome. And so we want you to have an opportunity to reflect on this. So we have one final question for you to take, and then to compare this in the context of the work that you're doing or the organization and find out what does the practical meaning of quality apply in terms of what you are doing in your work. So again, thank you very much for being with us on this video series, and I look forward to perhaps seeing some of you on our video series when we do our Greenbelt online program for Esteem. Thank you very much.